You know, my story, I felt, was a guy who, in times of hardship and in times of, of trial, uh, really, you know, held strong to his faith, held strong to his family, and I felt that that was my story. Even if that hardship was perhaps exaggerated? No, it was what I went through was real. You know, the feelings, the, the pain, the sorrow, that, that was all real. Katie Couric is asking Manti Teo why he continued to perpetuate a lie about having had an online girlfriend after discovering that she didn't exist. Reportedly, a Christian singer, Ronaya Tuyasa Sopo, took a friend's photo and used it to pretend to be the woman Teo loved. Well, Katie Couric joins us now. Before the break, Katie, welcome. We're glad to have you on the show. We played a clip in which Thanks, he Bertha. talked about falling for a woman and spending hours on the phone with her, and you asked him for his phone records. What did they show you? Yeah, we looked at a, a log of phone calls, and they did show that there were dozens upon dozens of phone calls to uh, a number uh, repeatedly over the course of the months that he was involved in a relationship or, you know, a certain kind of relationship with this person, Lene Kakua. And some of those calls lasted hours upon hours. And so um, we, we looked at that and I know he has said and told me that he would fall asleep with his ear to the phone and then wake up. And uh, so I think there were extensive phone conversations. We also listened to some voicemail messages that were left by the person on the other end of the line, the, the young woman he was ostensibly involved in a relationship with. So, um, yes, it's a, it's a very strange story, certainly. Very complicated. And the big question, do you believe Manti Teo was a victim of the hoax or was part of the hoax? Well, I think that things are not always black and white. I don't think he was part of it and that I don't believe from our conversation that he concocted this elaborate scheme to somehow enhance his image as a college football player. I think it slowly insidiously developed into a, 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 a pretty intimate relationship where they sounded in the course of their conversations and interactions like a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. So um, I think that what the question is, is did he somehow embellish uh, the details, did he somehow misrepresent, misrepresent and mislead reporters? He m admitted to lying to his father. And did he prolong the story even after he knew that it was a hoax? I think those are some of the things that we talk about in my interview today. All right, so we'll be looking forward to seeing that and uh, a continuation in part two of that. Thank you so much. We, uh, we appreciate your taking the time to speak with us, Katie.